Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the Final Cut Bro. I am so excited to be here with you on the FX Factory YouTube channel. We have all been there. Eventually, as video editors, somebody is gonna ask us to create a slideshow. Now, creating a slideshow can be really tedious. That is until you get this amazing plugin called Photo Montage 3 from the FX Factory store. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can actually use this plugin and how it is going to save you so much time for all those future slideshows that you end up needing to create. Create. So with that being said, let's dive in. Firstly, you'll need to install Photo Montage 3 from the FX Factory store. Then you can locate it here in your generators and you'll locate it under the Photo Montage 3 category. Once you have opened up Photo Montage 3, you will see all of these different presets that it gives you straight out of the box. And these are really, really useful once you find a preset that you like. I'm gonna just go ahead and go with the filmic look. So I'm gonna drag that onto my timeline. Now it's actually brought in its own photo Photos, but if we want to change out those photos, which I'm sure you'll want to do, all you need to do is jump over here to the right side under the generators inspector and you will find this select images button. So go ahead and click that and all you're going to need to do is select all of the photos that you want to bring into your photo montage. So I'm going to go ahead and push open and it's going to bring up this handy dialogue window. This dialogue window is going to give you a lot of control over each of your photos. Now if you happen to close this dialogue window, you can easily open it by selecting your generator and you'll find this select images on screen control right here. So I'm going to go ahead and click that again and once again we can see all of our photos. Now there are a few very variables that you can work with in here to give yourself the most amount of control over your animations. First of which is you can actually rename every one of these photos. So let's say I just want to change this. Maybe this guy's name is Derek. Now let's say with Derek, I need to make a few edits. Well, it's really, really simple. All I need to do is double click the photo and that will bring up the actual application preview, which has all of its basic annotation features. You can actually go up into tools. You can adjust the color and size. Um, do whatever you need to do. You could also even crop it. So if you are not happy with the framing of the photo, I could click and drag and create a box and I could push command K to actually crop the photo. So all the features that are within preview work right here. Then when you're done, you'll just go ahead and push command S to save it and close it out. And all of those changes will be applied to Photo Montage 3, which is really, really handy. After that, you can take a look over here at the duration. Now it says that it is zero seconds. That doesn't mean the photo is going to only show up for zero seconds. That means it's going to run for the default duration. You can find the default duration by coming over here in the right hand side under the generators inspector. You'll see that it has the duration of each of the photos set to one second. So all of these photos are going to play out for one second before changing to the next photo. However, if you want to override that and set your own amount of time for one specific photo, say I want this photo of Derek to be five seconds because he's just so dang handsome. We'll go ahead and type in five and enter. And so now this photo is gonna show up for five seconds. Very simple, very easy to use. The next feature is the scaling tool. Now, if you find that a photo isn't quite fitting into the frame, you could easily scale it down. Now, the photo of Derek works really well, but maybe I'll locate another photo that's a little bit too tall. So we have this photo here, and maybe we just want to call her Barbara and we'll go ahead and scale this down to 50% just so that the photo fits a little bit better in the frame. Barbara it has been shrunk down because we shrunk her down to 50%. So let's say we're not particularly happy with that framing. So we can go ahead and just change this over to something like 90%. And now I will push OK and you'll see that Barbara's entire photo is now fitting perfectly in the frame. We also have the ability to scale to fill or scale to fit. Now by scaling to fill means it's going to zoom in the photo so that there are no black edges on the side. However, if we want the entire photo to fit into the frame, we can set it to fit. Once we've done that, we can actually change the transition for each and every one of these if we don't like the default transition that's applied. So let's say I wanna change it over to something like the defocus dissolve instead. This one specific photo is gonna have just that transition. So you can get really granular with how you want each and every photo to show up in your scene. So one other thing we can do from this dialogue window is we can actually change the order. So let's say we want Barbara to actually be the second photo that plays out. So I'll go ahead and just click and drag and you can see that now Barbara is the second photo that's going to play underneath Derek. So we now have all of these set in the order that we like. 
we have our transitions dialed in and again we can come back later and change these settings no problem let's say that we're not happy with how long each of these photos show up maybe we have a song and the tempo of the song makes it so the photos change nicely every 1.5 seconds so we can change the duration right here to 1.5 seconds so now all of the photos across the board are going to have that 1.5 second duration except for that photo of Derek he is going to still have that five second duration the next aspect that we can take a look at is the geometry settings here we can set the scale over all of the photos so let's say that we don't really want all the photos to completely fill the screen maybe we want them to be zoomed back so that we can see the borders of each of the photos and then we can move on to the next aspect which is the position now what's really nice about the position is let's say we wanted this to be on the left hand side you could click and drag the controls here if you wanted but there is an on-screen control to actually change the position so I'm just going to click and drag and now all the photos are going to play out here on the left hand side just like so so that's really handy to have built in as well as we could change the rotation of all the photos stuff like that if you have a specific orientation you want all of your photos to be but I'm going to leave those as they are and what we're going to do is actually apply some randomization to really give some nice dynamics to these photos so first we could take a look at the pan and the zoom currently it's set to in then alternate so what that's going to do is the very first photo is going to start off by zooming in if we were to change that to out then alternate now it will actually start by zooming out the photo and then it will go to zoom in you can also change the amount that the zooming is happening so if we don't want it to zoom quite so much that's totally up to you but something I like to do is actually just leave it on randomized because sometimes it'll zoom in and it might zoom in twice it might zoom out twice but it gives some some variation to the photos that's slightly unexpected and I feel like it gives a more pleasing result now moving on down after the pan and zoom we can actually take a look at the randomize and animate feature and I really like the randomize and animate feature we're gonna go ahead and check this box and this is going to actually change each of the photos to have a little bit of 3d dimension to them you'll see how this photo has been kind of pushed off and skew so now it actually looks like it's kind of floating in 3d space and I love what this does dynamically to each of these photos so you can change all of the randomization features as much as you like to get a bunch of different variations I'm gonna leave them as they are because I really like how just out of the box it looks now after we have those basic animations applied we could come on down here to the image border and vignette if I go ahead and enable that we can give everything a nice uniform border so I'm gonna drag up the border settings and you'll see how it's created this nice white outline around my photo and this is gonna be applied to all of the photos now let's say that we wanted to actually round out the edges a little bit we have that option right here so I can actually give these kind of a curved edge which is a little bit more pleasing perhaps we could also apply this border aging which I love it kind of roughens up the edges a bit and I'm gonna go really far with this to show the next features so we have the aging currently it's set to coarse we could also change it over to round and you'll notice how it actually kind of rounds out some of the edges a little bit more so here's the course it's a little bit more jagged and again here is round now if you're still not quite happy with that and maybe you want to smooth that out even a little bit more there is this smooth contour option so I'll drag that up and you'll see how that really smooths out the edges one last thing you might want to add is the ability to add in this vignette I like the vignette I think it adds a little bit more age to the photos in a way but again that's totally up to how you like to do things the next option is the effects now what's really cool about the effects is if you want everything to kind of have a uniform look this can be a great way to do that let's say we want to boost the warm colors now all of the warm colors in all of these photos are going to be nicely boosted and you'll see how it kind of gives it this nice common grade across the board so that can be a really handy feature and there are so many other options here we could do vibrant color we could do something like desaturate maybe if you want to give it more of a moody look it's totally up to you but you'll see how that gives it all this really nice look and feel across the board I'm gonna go ahead and actually set it to randomize so that each photo has a little bit different look to it but when you do that you'll notice that it opens up a broad range of additional options each of these have a checkbox next to them what that checkbox enables is the ability to choose what randomized features it's pulling from so currently it's only choosing from boost warm and boost cool 
and vintage. So if we wanted to add in additional options, we could enable halftone, we could enable duotone, we could enable sepia. And so now there are so many other options for these photos to choose from, and they all have a different effect applied. Now the next one, the drop shadow is really handy, but what's important is that you actually have a background applied for you to see the drop shadow. So all you need to do is enable your drop shadow. You'll come down to the bottom and find the background option, and you'll find there are several different backgrounds you can work with. So we'll just try something like linear gradient, and it's got this nice gradient background to it, as well as it has this adaptive color. Now I really like the adaptive color because that color is going to shift according to the look of the photo. So that can be a really great way to tie the background in with the foreground and make things look that much more professional. Now one other option you have here, you can affect all of your transitions. Now currently it's set to filmic dissolve because I chose the filmic preset. But what we can do is we can actually set this to randomize. Now just like with the effects, the randomizer for the transitions is going to allow us to enable or disable different transitions that we don't want to use. So maybe we want to only work with the defocus dissolves, the defocus white perhaps, the filmic dissolves, just to keep everything kind of cohesive in its feel. And then you can disable any of the transitions that you maybe wouldn't want, like the pig slate dissolve. Maybe that doesn't work with this kind of filmic look we're going for. So you can get as granular as you like with the transition, but it makes it so you can have a different transition for each and every photo without having to go through all the labor of jumping into select images and changing the transition accordingly. Now the very last thing we're gonna take a look at is the ability to add in titles, and that is under the transition settings here. We're gonna go ahead and change this over to embed and again, I'll jump over to the beginning and you can see how we have this text here right on top of our photo. We can push down the titles appearance options here and we can change where the text is showing up in our photos, which is really nice. We can change the kerning on it. We can enable a drop shadow on the text. We can set blend modes. It's really up to you how you want that text to look, but you'll see how nice it is that it, it's bringing in that text from my select images. So it'll say Derek, Barbara, and we could even have it say subscribe. So I'm just barely scratching the surface of all the amazing features that this plugin has to offer. And what's really great is there is a free trial on the FX Factory store, so you can completely try this plugin out to your heart's content. There's no time limit, it just has a watermark on it. Then when you're ready to buy it, you just purchase it and that watermark will vanish. So if this plugin interests you, consider hitting up the link down below. My name is Dylan Bates, the Final Cut Bro. Thank you so much for stopping by the FX Factor YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this tutorial, consider pressing the like button, consider subscribing, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.